two is you know significant considering two. we're. I, I I heard I heard two can be as bad as one because the loneliest number man, is the number all, one. All I'm hearing is he's a little jacked up because he's going to pull out this bag that was originally filled with. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Valve has updated Proton to 4.11-1. That's important because we're going to show you how to enable that new D9VK hotness. And have you ever wanted to set up a dedicated streaming PC on Linux without having to buy an extra HDMI encoder and all that nonsense? I'm going to show you how. Want to live in a Tom Cruise movie without... Giving thousands of dollars to Scientology? Well, first I gotta ask you, do you prefer GNOME or KDE? What does Xenu prefer? And Daggerfall Unity's almost done! See you in hell, DOSBox! Valve submits patches to the kernel. Yeah, that Valve. And yeah, that <laughs> kernel. Uh, and they the, the, also... The mock kernel? <laughs> continue to refine the steam labs they've gone from boiling piss to boiling just plain tap water i guess <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we're back again that's right back <laughs> like scoliosis you know you love us i'm old man vin vin stone our semi-team canadian podcaster one jordan swing holding down um the toronto area and uh that that beautiful smile sonic the hedgehog himself with Hi, <laughs> Sanic, Sanic, hey. the head on the horse Hey, dude, I, listen, man, he's matching. <laughs> Gotta go fast. He's got the blue spider mount, the blue uh, in the shirt, too. So, um, and, 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 and he's yeah. got the human-style teeth as well, which is the complete, which completes the Sonic package. Man, who's looking forward to that nightmare? Not me. Anyway. I, I want to take acid and watch that movie. That's I what I want to do. Okay, maybe if they're, I'm, like, Velcroed down to something, yes. Only if you record it. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we gotta do, we gotta have a flashback as to what we went up to since last week. Uh, I got a little thing I want to announce. Not really, but I, I bought my first PlayStation controller. It's so hooker red. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> that is very red. <laughs> it is. Ro Roxanne. Roxanne. <laughs> I mean, compared to the interface, maybe not so much. That one's more like sparkly red. Uh, what this was, this was priced at. Um, Cheaper than the other colors, red. So I picked it up <laughs> to play a fighting game that we're going to be throwing some lawn chairs at in a minute. But Pedro, you got something new as well. Yes, I did. And um, we shall be reading this a uh, little bit in the appropriate section. But yeah, it was really nice of uh, one of you fine folks out there to send an Amazon gift, which came wrapped. And Man, uh, this... talk about hooker red. <laughs> it's drugs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this uh, little Amazon gift is uh, an XLR AT2020. So <laughs> uh, on a scale of how many AT2020s have you received in the mail from other people? Two. That's it. <laughs> Next week, Pedro's in stereo, bitches. <laughs> but did it come with fruit shaped erasers, Pedro? That's it the important thing that we all I, need I, to I know. I was disappointed. No, I guess Aww. Amazon doesn't do that for packaging. Failure. <laughs> failure. 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 They, they ship Santa hats, isn't there? Yeah, right. <laughs> Jordan, what's up, baby? Oh, I'm. Actually, this this week was pretty boring. I got I had uh, had a day off yesterday, so I spent it dicking around. And I got a massage, and that was nice. All right. Yeah. No happy ending, though. Never happy ending for Jordan. Well, do do you feel like um, rubbing off the horse, though? I mean, I don't. I don't not feel like rubbing off the horse. I gotta go get my gloves and some lube because it's the steam. Echo, 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 echo. <laughs> Shut up, Dolphin. Uh, okay. <laughs> We got to get right into this change log. Uh, we were talking about Proton 411-1. They've rebased Proton on Wine 411. There is a connection. It's bringing more than 3,300 improvements from Wine into Proton. 154 pack patches, excuse me. D9 VK has been added. That's the experimental Vulcan-based Direct 3D9 renders. So if you've had a, some old DX9 games that are running like butt... This seems to fix it. Uh, DXVK has been updated to 1.3. F Audio's got a bump, and uh, I was really surprised because it also fixed the 
because I've been playing around with the D9VK. I was like, this is an interesting kit, interesting mm-hmm. technology. And But if I touched any of my controllers and Steam received input, it's like, here's your desktop. Like, okay, <laughs> this fixed that issue too. Um, very impressed with it. I, pretty happy yeah. with it. I, I made a, it was like, here's a video. There's a how-to on linuxgamecast.com. It's easy. There's two ways to set it up. You can do it per game or globally. And uh, the developer for D9VK left a little frog picture because this thing's like the little cute frogs on the YouTube video. Yeah, it's, it's like the frog frog. He's got a thing with frogs injection. on his. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it's good because uh, once again, we see Valve upstreaming their stuff to the parent uh, project uh, when when possible. Uh, 154 patches this is a significant amount. Um, and it's good to see that uh, vanilla wine is just going to be approving as a part of it. The other interesting thing that came out with this release, though, is that they are now uh, recompiling a bunch of uh, wine libraries to be built as um, as DLLs as opposed to DSOs. I guess the the intention there is that if it looks like a Windows system call and it smells like a Windows system call, maybe uh, anti-cheat software like Easy Anti-Cheat won't pick it up as sort of like a weird DLL injection. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Uh, but that uh, if, seems if, to if, be the reasoning. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you if you are going to build uh, Proton locally now, you're going to need a Vagrant VM to do the Windows compile. Um, I would like to see them maybe do something with uh, MinGW to actually produce the DLLs, but you know, whatever. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> the other and, the other thing that uh, whoops, go on. Yeah. Uh, and on top of the uh, the Proton bits. Uh, Valve, in the very same post that they announced uh, the the new Proton version, they also announced that they had um, submitted a few patches for the uh, Linus consideration. And yeah, apparently there's enough uh, demand, I guess, for them to actually put in the request to expand a few techs, however you want to spell it. Uh, the few text calls um and basically tr- their ultimate goal here is to try and get away from using wine e-sync mm-hmm. because wine e-sync has a few issues and listen it- man wine e-sync works gloriously unless it doesn't <laughs> I, I mean, it, uh, yeah. it, it works. It works great if you set your um, open file descriptors to a sufficiently high amount. Mm-hmm. And this yeah, is, but you have to set it <laughs> right. And and effectively, this is attempting to sidestep the issue by using Futex to access memory pages directly, not through the Linux file handling subsystem, mm-hmm. which should bypass that issue entirely and allow for some better performance with getting all that e-sync goodness in. Yeah, I was thinking about installing the kernel patch and building that. I just isn't like, nah, wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if if you're if you're an Arch user, then someone's already done the work for you, and you can ingest it and play around with it to your heart's content. That's because uh, Arch for, is better. Shut up. Uh, yeah, yeah, Arch, Arch, Arch is better for yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah, um, and if if someone had told me five years ago that oh, you know, Valve, you know, the people behind Half Life and Steam, they're going to be submitting patches for the Linux kernel. Uh, I I would have called, you know, like the uh, men in white who come with the jackets that help you like yourself. The milkman? That my, much more? My, my, my cocaine dealer? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so, so I mean, you, you, bring up, you bring up a valid point, Pedro. Like, we, we, we like to joke that Valve doesn't make games, but it's very clear that they're still committed to, to putting out software. They're fixing a lot yeah. of these low-level issues under Linux to try and make it a better gaming platform. Well, I mean, in all fairness, after Artifact, they're like, okay, take two. Let's do something else. Um, <laughs> let's, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 can, they can work on mon- multiple things. Their lack of focus is a, is a blessing and a curse. Man, man, Valve's like a small, small, small house, man. Like 12, 13 people there. And that, that yeah, reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's anyway. because Gabe keeps eating them. Anyways. Let's keep this train rolling. New games have been added to the whitelist. To Pedro, uh, you brought up an interesting point. Uh like, weren't they trying to get rid of this? Because there's now a process where developers are like, hey, to uh, which, well, I mean, that was a thing. But now we got some new hotness on the whitelist. We were talking about this in the pre-pre-super super shows and was this is Valve. I felt I could legitimately say maybe they just forgot they did that. <laughs> and <laughs> Because as a whole part of the, like, introducing Steam play and how developers can now, uh, when they submit a game, they can account for uh, 
Steam Play, and they can make changes to the game really, specifically really, for that. Really pretty girls yeah. in Mahjong Solitaire. Mm. Really well. <laughs> it's a bestseller. It's a bestseller, Ben. It's, got, I, I, it's I gotta, got Cuphead, so I'm down with that. I, I got to snipe Pedro. Both the uh, both Fallout's one and two are available on the whitelist as well. And the the one that uh, the one that I was kind of into, uh, but there was an edit to this post that claimed that this hasn't been effectively added to the whitelist. They've just added uh, something to the prefix, so they're testing some stuff. Is Belgear Rising Revengeance a game in which Hideo Kojima actually accurately predicts the future in 2014, which is a little <laughs> insane? But you know, this is the world we live in. Nano machines, son. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it wasn't just Metal Gear Revengeance, it was also Grid and the Mission Packs for Quake. Uh, all four of those are currently, they have like a Steam Play Proton config, but they're not exactly in the whitelist uh, package just yet. Yeah, they, 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 they but, have the attribute app config or app compat configs, which is well. Yeah. My entire experience with Proton is like mm, going through the seven pages I have on Humble, going, well, "What do I well, actually?" It's like thirteen now. <laughs> Humble Monthly, hi. Uh, but <laughs> just like I wonder if this works. No, nope, that doesn't work. All right, whatever. I mean, yeah, this is one of the and, good things. As about if Proton. I needed more reasons to play Fallout too. It, it's been whitelisted now. Dude. Oh, so, so so has my friend Pedro. Not this person, yep. Pedro, who is. <laughs> I, I, the, the word the word to describe our relationship will get us to such a level of demonetization that we'll, I think we'll actually start making. <laughs> Do you think maybe in point. the future we'll be able to Pedro in VR? That'd be terrifying. Uh, yeah. So uh, Collabora, um, they're a site that does um, crowdfunding and um, coordinating development resources for various open source projects. Uh, they are working on something called um, XR Desktop, which is effectively a layer that allows um, guys like Gnome and KDE to render their desktop onto a VR space and possibly eventually an augmented reality space. I want space. that, but I don't want I don't want it to look like that. The aliasing old jag, and that's kind of what it would look like <laughs> right now. I, I, mean, I he, think well, that yeah, has he, something to do with the translation to just, you know, that yeah. <laughs> no Pedro you, you realize... no that's what big VR wants you to believe <laughs> don't fall for the propaganda baby B big face toaster <laughs> yeah um but but yeah like it, it also looks a little weird because you know you're used to looking at stuff like Xcode or whatever on a um or IntelliJ or whatever your IDE choices on a flat screen and then having that transpose into like a sphere area <laughs> will always look a little unnatural gotta ask you it's, Jordan uh, gotta ask you what do we what's it what, what do we think about Gulkin Gulkin, I, I saw I saw that. I'm like, man, they gotta they gotta come up with some better names. This is actually it actually consists of a couple different parts. There's Gulkin, GXR lib input path or lib input sync, and XR desktop itself. Um, and there's a patch that's going in for Kwin and uh, Gnome Shell as well. Uh, XFCE will get this in the year 4097. Optimism, so, yeah, <laughs> gotta love it. Oh. Yeah, one of the things that uh, you um, didn't mention in what uh, in what it includes is a compositor, which is something that uh, you know people who are using KDE or GNOME is like, yeah, okay, we have a compositor of our own. Mm -hmm. Turns out, if you are using Kwin or Mutter, uh, you won't need a different compositor for the uh, VR desktop or XR desktop, uh, which because it just builds off of those. So not introducing further resource consumption is probably a good idea, given how many resources generating a whole 3D uh, space worth of desktop is going to use on its own. It, what, 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 we what, we what, talked about this on Wednesday. And, yeah. you know, this, the, this is my happy spot if I could have, you know, one, two, three, four, five of these monitors in a very light, like dual 16k display that worked at a bazillion frames a second but we got we, we got a, a couple more baby steps have to go down before we're going to be in that happy spot and so i, I think this is uh is it enough for someone like me to think about getting a vr headset maybe maybe I am certainly I, I, curious. I, I I feel with the live streaming element of it though, and people just seeing the fucking toaster on your face, 
<laughs> it might it might be a little goofy. One one. No, cool dude. I'll wear those that... like springy like alien yeah, the, things. The, the, yeah, the eye, the eye things. It'll be yeah. great. And, or maybe paint like a little something on the on the face paint, played with the vibe. One one cool thing though is that a bunch of this was uh, a bunch of the initial work for this was actually developed in Godot, which mm. is pretty freaking. What well, is using Vulcan? They had a whole new thing for it. Yeah. Yes, this is this is yep. true. Um. So th this, I, I I don't know. We're we're, we're starting to see now that. People have sort of got over the initial weirdness of VR. We're starting to see some actual interesting imp implementations using a lot of technology developed initially for the gaming space. Which is, is that Angelo Lansbury? Nice. I'm going to say yes. I'm going with yes. One. Because why not? <laughs> I'm down with that. New update, Steam Labs. Let's rock it. Yes. So you may remember uh, we talked about Steam Labs a couple of weeks ago, and it was basically a couple of sliders and five second videos, or you could watch In like all a fairness, thirty did, minutes. Did super you really clip. think this might be one of the things that Valve would just like what? Steam Labs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing that. Yeah, you think of all the things that they forget about that they'd forget about this. But no, no, they didn't forget about it. And they're, um, well, they say that they've learned some stuff from the community feedback. Bad idea, Valve. But you should know this by now. Uh, and they've introduced a couple of new features. There's an exclude feature. So, like, any recently played game, say, if you have them in your library, they the no longer get recommended VR to you. The which is how long you would want to get face fucked by a toaster. <laughs> the answer is for hours, man. Hours. <laughs> now we know how long it takes them to... Whatever. Right. Uh, Hours. And uh, there's a, a couple of more uh, features that they have lined up there. And I was sitting there reading through it's like, that's that's neat. I still go to the, you know, new game releases. I go to SteamOS Linux. I hit show all new releases and I filter by games. It's like, oh, look, that's the list I want to look at. Good. In the meantime, Valve, where is that library update that you said was coming in the summer? I have an alternate question. Maybe somebody at home has. Have you noticed if you go to sort by Linux games and you go to try to browse all new releases by Linux at Arizona? Mm. It did that for one day for me. It, and it's been it's back doing, now. Okay, maybe it's fixed now. It was like that for a week. And I was like, mm. grr. It was jacking up the way I searched for news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, and I, I mean, like this. This is a feature set that Valve is developing here that is not targeted at us at all. This our our market segment does not pay attention to this. Mm. This is a hundred percent for like trying to develop flashy things that you know children or college students will see on the store page and they'll impulse buy shit because that's, that's what right, this is man. all about. Yeah, little Timmy like dropping like the twelve hundred bucks is like yeah. Dude, li li little Timmy's parents fucking gave him a credit card. So, do you know how utterly deceased I would be if I had VR shit to distract me as a child? My neck would be like nineteen ways broken. More so. Well, well there, there's that that news stories where like people are looking down more, and so they're developing like skull horns. You'd have like the Hellboy thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a thing, uh, man. Uh, right. Okay, we got a couple of new games this week, though. It's yes, not all put uh, on. Most it's just mostly proton wave squared. Uh, they have a uh, new release out, uh, 0 0.73. They added Linux support, although you know, uh, the circular progress bars are a little too thin. Real progress bars have curl curves, curls, you just, curls. They got, cur they got curls and curves. None of, none gotta, of, the, none of that straight hair wave. <laughs> no, who, 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 who wants that? But it's 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 a, it's a shoot 'em up. Um, but the catch here is apparently the AI will try to adapt to your bullshit, so you can't just use the same strategy because you will get corner fucked. Um, the dev has said that this is not using Proton or anything like that. It is a custom build. So if that actually just means that he's just clicked export and uploaded it to Steam, well, we gotta, we gotta find out. Maybe send us some hate mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, apparently they did send us some keys over Curator Connect though, so we could probably investigate this on our own. This uh, is they true. did. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised uh, with us. Like, got an email. Oh, new Curator Connect thing. Let's have a look. Oh, they said three of them. Waves too. Went to go to the show notes to post it. It's like, oh, it's already there. Neat. <laughs> and uh, they did do the thing, which is like, don't do this. And not because uh, they, they sent me a DM, which I discovered today when I was trying to figure out what host Gator was drinking. Because I was in my DMs because I did the Twitter thing. And I was like, hey, thing. But apparently, thanks for doing that. We don't normally see those. But good on you. It, so it's just a schmop. Yeah, and I don't mean that. Yep, it's a VR way. shmup. 
<laughs> okay, that that's kind of what my takeaway was from the trailer. It'd be interesting to play. It has online multiplayer, so Ooh, the fuck does that, that work? Cool. Can I be the bullet? <laughs> you listen. You're you're already the bullet in real life. I want to be one of those stationary bits of the scenery. I, I want to be a mongoose bullet. <laughs> you 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 can. I believe in you. Just All right. Try try your best, sweetheart. Atma City. Uh, it's out. Uh, well, it's in early access. Anywho. And uh, it is SimCity in space. Well, 3D, 3D space anyways. I saw that movie. It had what's his name in it. It wasn't that great. <laughs> right, yeah. Cube, cube 2, Hypercube. Um, but yeah, you can, you can build these sort of 3D cities that don't aren't subject to the laws of gravity. Gravity, yeah. Excel, acceleration, mass, you know, physics. Listen, man, maybe uh, they just love the blocks a whole lot, so they stick to it. <laughs> I mean, if, if if you like making really visually distinct cities and you're into SimCity, this game might actually be for you. It only requires three gigabytes of VRAM, so 970 owners, you guys can just go fucking nuts. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it has night mode. Fighter of the day Honestly, mode. Champion it, of the it, sun. It's like... Um... <laughs> I'm imagining like Bizarro World from the comics that's like a cube Earth. It's like... Oh, it's that okay <laughs> oh yeah no just like a bunch of random supermen show up and start trashing your city that would actually be really cool like actually actually that there, there's an idea for a game you, you can have this one for free devs okay is it's a city builder but it takes place in a world where like superman and shit exists and periodically like super villains and superheroes will fight and destroy your city and so you have to constantly rebuild and like take so it's into just sim city but instead of the tsunami it's superheroes gotcha right but it's like it's like a constant <laughs> thing that happens like every, every every time the fucking avengers movies happen you're like okay well now it's time to, now it's time to rebuild my sewer infrastructure because oh it's new york it's, simulator but okay. how, yeah, how, it's, how do we it's, fit it's in, like, up with online, alien serpents like, transactions with the dating mechanic <laughs> we'll, need, we'll need to work, we'll need to workshop that. Maybe okay. we'll go into early all access right, and play around right. with it. Uh, maybe maybe Epic will give us a bunch of money. And uh, finally, we have Night and Plus. And uh, well, it, the description is uh, I think very game. descriptive. Go figure. Uh, join Brave Sir Ludalot on his epic quest in this little Zelda like adventure. Hang on, hang on. Was that lewd a lot or loot, loot a lot? A lot. That, so is he a loot? Loot. Yeah, he 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 is a he's a four stringed instrument that's dual chord. <laughs> and looking at the um, screenshots and the trailers, like yeah, that that looks very very Zelda e. Uh, and it's only it's like uh, four pounds twenty nine over here, mm -hmm. so it may be worth a look if you like Zelda. Honestly, I never really it, was it, that it, big it, a fan of Zelda. It, it's six sixty nine in in Canada, <laughs> which is which is a pretty nice price. <laughs> Five ninety nine freedom dollars. Uh, hmm. I mean, it's, it's 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 Zelda, right? Like it it does yeah. the Zelda Binding of Isaac Zelda Dungeon Crawling. <laughs> the one thing that I think is remarkable about this game is that it's not procedurally generated. Oh my god, someone actually designed levels. That's the puzzles. different. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, but I, I do think we got to point this out. And everyone's saying this, I know most of you are listening and not seeing. This is, when you say Zelda, it's just the dungeons of Zelda. Yes, there's so, there's no there's no overworld. You don't really have to, like, go bragging on it. It's not procedurally generated. It's like, well, yeah, you just move four fucking blocks around. I mean. <laughs> I, yeah, but but someone actually, you know, attempted to put design and effort into, like, the rooms. I well, guess. it could have been know. procedurally generated once. <laughs> Does, you know what? That, Good enough. That, 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 that is a that is a valid strategy. That is a valid strategy. It, Into the Breach does some interesting stuff with like random maps, but all the maps are actually fixed, hmm. which is kind of which is kind of interesting. I was watching a video on that. Do, Anyways, do, which one of you wants to play it? Because they like send a key and like here. Do you want to play it? It's like I don't. The, 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 the one key. The one I learn key. I, you know we I can give it Pedro. away. Jordan can have it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? We'll make Sandy play it. All right. <laughs> all right. We're, 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 we're done talking about Steam and Valve and all that good stuff. Coming up next, Ven teaches you how to basically rip us off to make a better Linux gaming podcast so that you don't have to listen to us anymore. And we're back with some, uh, well, we have some thank yous to give out to quite a few of you this week, at least two. Uh, two. So, yeah. It's, it's quite. <laughs> well, two is, you know significant considering two. we're 
I, I, I heard I heard two can be as bad as one because the lonely number is the number one. All I'm hearing is he's a little jacked up because he's going to pull out this bag that was originally filled with methamphetamine and he put a microphone in it. I mean, that's the, also the bag true. Is gone. He ate the bag, <laughs> well, man. Uh, uh, along with all the meth. <laughs> all right, well, you know, if, if, if you if you would like to donate methamphetamines to us, you can maybe, I don't know, if you don't want to actually send us the meth, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. we got a support menu with all the various options to support us. Best way to do that is head on over to Patreon.com slash LinuxGameCast. 113 of you are giving us 256 bucks a week to bring all this nonsense to your face hole. Um, you Becoming a Patreon gets you some cool stuff like uh, Discord, early show note access. You get your name in the credits when we do our Star Wars or Stranger Things or what other other credits we're ripping off this week. <laughs> uh, you also get some timed exclusivity to to our VODs. Uh, you can play games with us if we open up the call, like uh, Rocket Rocket League at the end of this stream. Rocket Cars. You, uh, yeah, and uh, we got we got we got a brand new Patreon. We got to thank as well. We got to yes, thank sir. Cowbird Boy, who is the best bovine avian boy. Now, what, so far, one of my favorite unusual things that uh, Pedro is required by LGC Law to do is to come up with 1.5 facts about <laughs> 1.5 facts. Cowbird Boy. <laughs> See, Cowbird Boy, I'm pretty sure he's neither a cow or a bird, but he is perhaps a boy. You know, I'm terrified that I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning like when a half cow, half bird kicks in my front door. <laughs> and he's like, you better shut it's that one and a half person. person. Yeah. <laughs> is, 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 isn't, that, isn't that like a Chinese legend or something where if you don't eat all your rice, the, the cow bird like knock, kicks down your door and wakes you up and strangles <sighs> you're, you? You're just giving atomic <laughs> ammunition for the lore table, man. Stop. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, you know what? If wishes were fishes, we'd all be drowning in sashimi. But you can head on over to uh, our wish list. It's in the menu in the aforementioned support tab uh, where you can buy hardware for us or Pedro or Ven. The royal us is me, of course. Um, Pedro, actually got, <laughs> Pedro actually got something. He mentioned it earlier did. in the show. I got an XLR. Oh, this, this, is, all right, all right. This, this is bullshit. You didn't put it back in the bag, man? No. Put it in the bag and then take it out of the bag again. I unbagged it uh, in the uh, intro, so it it needs to be canonical, man. Come on. Stop stop dragging out this bagging issue. Um, (laughs) But yeah, Chris B. Chris B. also sent a note with the AG2020. And uh, he says, I've been listening to your podcasting work since 2015 and have enjoyed your unique perspectives on what's happening in the Linux world. Yeah, we can't agree on anything, Chris. <laughs> Man, go, go for it. We, we agree on everything. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have no opinion on this one way or the other. Oh, uh, that's just like you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if, if though, although if you are curious about the kind of stuff that we use to make the show, oh, yeah. or if you're interested in maybe making a little replica set, which Ben will further explain how to do in the news segment, you can head on over to our Amazon, I guess it's a store technically, but it's really just where we put it's, all the stuff that we use. St- yeah, right. Amazon, Amazon's really cool. We like that. Uh, we, we got a bunch of like links on our web zone that we can't tell you about, but they're there. Go figure them out. It's a clue. It's a game, but we are, we <laughs> joined like, the influencer pro- program because Amazon's like, here, join this thing. And it's like, here, try to sell people through the store. And it's like, nope, but you know what? That's an excellent way to list Everything that we put together that we've tested guaranteed to work with Linux and uh, you can go there. Like I always say, man, go buy it at Newegg. We don't care about that. I don't think we might get a cut from that. I'm 100% on it. But- well, I mean, you, you, you use our Newegg affiliate link if you're going to yeah, buy it. Yeah, there is the Newegg. Newegg affiliate link. So, <laughs> Which we may or may not. St- We're horrible at this. Anyway, we got merch, all that fun <laughs> yeah. stuff. Thank you. You are awesome. You make this possible. Come say hi in Discord. Wave at me. That's where we hang out. Yeah. Okay. Go, 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 go to store.linuxgamecast.com, buy a mug. Then tell Let's us Let's about- do this. Linux. Okay, man. You want to be the next hotness and you want to stream, but, you know, turns out your Pentium 3, even though it is overclocked to 11 gigahertz, um, just doesn't have the juice to play the games and stream the streams. So and you're like, all right, I, I want a dedicated streaming PC. Turns out, you know... The, the old way, the, the, the ancient way in the old times, you would have to go and purchase an HDMI encoder to run, then a splitter, then run that, wire it, then have to get audio. Nay. Turns out, this work on Windows too, but don't tell them. 
uh, <laughs> new tech has a, has this technology called NDI and it's completely free because you know, this is not original, but new tech was the only company that's like, Hey man, here's an SDK. You can use this for other stuff. You can send your video at a high quality 1080p 60 if you want, uh, right over your ether noodles running just your standard router. It is pretty damn cool and it's very efficient. Uh, we used it because I, I'm not going to tell you to try something until we dog food it. We used it to do this show last week. So if you want to see the video quality of that, um, go put it in your face organ. But there's a guide on LinuxGameCast.com. Really straight out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically let's say if you have OBS running currently right now under Linux, you're good. Just read that and you're like, oh, we'll do that. We'll put that together. And then you can get video from column A over to column B without any extra wires. And uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, find something fun. And it goes both ways. It's video and audio. Giggity. So, uh, hey, go have fun with that if you want. Like, I'm not your boss or anything. Pedro, right, cool. Pedro, are you going to find... Yeah, you should do it. you got like 11 d laptops, so you could do it over wireless, even though it's not suggested, but you could have one shot with all of your laptops on it. I could. <laughs> you, you could individually like spell out. Use like your desktop background to spell hoarder on all the shots. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. See, see what you got. What you got to do is you got to like capture capture a bunch of uh, windows and then like arrange them in a mosaic that's just Pedro's face. <laughs> Why would I do that again? Do you know how long to get those tiles right in the bathroom? To eat? No, I, I don't. I don't, I don't, think I don't, I don't Jordan, know anything about tiles. Uh, how yeah. long? Yeah, <laughs> how long you need to get tiles right is a good idea. So. <laughs> well, listen, man, it's like two facts about ducks, and they're both wrong. It kind of like the tiles. Man. <laughs> quack, quack, motherfucker. Uh, speaking, spe speaking of quacks, uh, we are a couple of our favorite psycho quacks are almost done. Uh, Daggerfall Unity. It's a game engine re-implementation thing. So, similar to OpenMW, except a little less insane in scope. I was scared there for a minute. I was going to be like, it's a duck. And I'm like, oh, what the hell are we? Out? No. Quack, 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 <laughs> quack, blam, blam. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, Daggerfall Unity has their first alpha release. What does that mean? Well, you can basically play the entire game from start to finish now hmm. uh it may not work particularly well because there's still there's there's still a lot of polish but all the core meat is there and they've said that now the the mission is to just start refining things um fixing bugs improving performance um increasing modability that sort of stuff um yeah, so uh, the other thing they've done is they've gone up and shored up all the quests, so now there are should be no more uncompletable quests. You should be able to do every single mission in the game. Um, and Interkarma, the current project lead, has said that once 1.0 comes out, uh, he's going to be transitioning away from the project lead. He wants to hand it off to someone else. So um, that so they're going to start looking for uh, replacement folks. Hey, Pedro. As progress to 1.0. Pedro. Approaches. Mm -hmm. Check out those numbers. Look at them digits. <laughs> that 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 is, that is such a sexy beard. I'm 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 what three twenty by two hundred. Mm. Yeah, right. mm. <laughs> Retro. Jeez, that wouldn't be bad even back in the day because if we're thinking about the time frame from this game's original release, I I know we were doing ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Yeah, but I think well, I think maybe, the high maybe end targeting low end systems. Yeah, yeah, like the high end would do ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Most people were just running six forty by four eighty. But let's get authentic. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> oh man, it, 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 it's too it's too real. It's too real. Uh, but yeah, you can you can check it out. Da the Daggerfall source data is free via the Bethesda website, so you can go download it and play this if you are so inclined. Indeed, and yeah, one of the things that they are keen to point out is that yes, in theory, you can play from start to end in this build, but there's still a lot of stuff uh to fix including bugs that basically were par uh were imported from the uh the assets themselves because it's a bethesda game hmm. so yeah can, can, can you use a bucket to phase through to the end boss let's I, find out i love i love that things like this. this is just a straight up testament uh it's a fair warning when Hey, I need to figure out how to use this Unity engine. It's when it gets out of hand. It's like, oh, I, oh, oh no, I've created a project. Careful, kids. You too might end up with a GitHub account. 
Oh, oh no, this is a full game all of a sudden. What the hell? Wow, wow. Okay, wow. Um, special K. Zero, no, it's, it's not too special. It's zero K. Uh, they yeah. have uh, they have their new version. Uh, it's 1. low K. 7. I love that low K lifestyle. Point... Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm going to hit the eject button Good. on that. No, mo- no, 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 no. All right, yeah. So zero, zero K. Uh, what, 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 what is it? I have no idea. I did not know until this got added to the show notes. Um, it is a uh, mech RTS. It seems to have a relatively active community. They have a brand new version out. Uh, they have some fixes. They, lots lots of the stuff is uh, balance related. So if you do not play zero K, all of this means absolutely nothing to you. You, you if you do play zero K, you probably have opinions about why this has made the game literally unplayable and how you're going to go back to Starcraft one. I guess I don't know. <laughs> But any, but anywho, um, so what's interesting here is that it does run on Linux, although their porting method is effectively mono. Uh, they have a tar.gz that uh, has a script that downloads the exe, uh, creates a desktop shortcut that runs it via mono, and away you go. But hey, you know, it ships in a tar.gz, and the permissions are set right, believe it or not. Um, so that that's the thing, if you're looking for a RTS these guys are around. Although I will, I will warn you that the people who play this game pretty much exclusively play this game. So you might, you might be hitting a bit of a learning wall that you're going to need to to climb. Hey, it's not too bad though. I mean, it's available at itch.io for a little price of free, definitely price to sell. They have a discord server if you want to drop in there. So what are you saying, man? Like, I mean, this is open source. It's multi-platform. Pedro's like RTS. Like, uh, it's, I don't yes, think it's open source. Which is why if I ever saw this before, I have no idea. I put it out of my mind because it's an RTS. <laughs> Oh, you're covering it up because uh, it says Zero <laughs> is a free real-time strategy. It aims to be the best open source multiplayer. Are, are, you, oh, are so you calling them fibbers? I just didn't see a no. GitHub link, so I assume it's not. It's just not my jam. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that in 2019, we, we uh, in order to qualify, I, I'm just it, I just, it's funny because, oh, it doesn't have a link to a Microsoft-owned entity, therefore not open source. Or GitLab, get anything. I know, but it's funnier yeah, when you say GitHub. <laughs> Not you That's at all. This is that wonderful weird world where it's like, wait, that doesn't. Well, yeah, yeah, welcome to 2019. Yeah, it, I, I, I think it's like it's the Kleenex thing, right? Where like, yeah, they're tissue papers or like la- latex bandages, not band aids, right? But it's it, it's just ingrained itself in the lexicon so much. Oh, it's available that... on Steam. Ooh. Oh, Windows. Oh, I mean, I, I, I mean, anyone has a hundred bucks and you could, I, you could, the, the Linux version is just the windows version. You just run it through Bono. So. <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you about a game that's not available on steam. Okay. Yet. Uh, which is, uh, well, it's super tux party and, uh, we've talked about it a couple of times already, but they have a new version out. Uh, alpha not point five is currently available for your downloading pleasure. And you can basically just, yeah. Just uh, they have a couple of changes. Uh, you can uh, speak Strider now. Uh, they uh, <laughs> let you. Pick okay, I, 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 because... I was I was wondering what the hell that was. I'm like, is Strider playable in the game now? <laughs> I'm no. <laughs> the basically there was an issue with the previous versions where you couldn't pick French. You can now. Uh, they've also uh, introduced support for uh, full localization, which is nice. It's very good to see. Uh, and the, um, All right, there was also here, an man. issue. I see the two penguins. I see a devil and I see some weeb shit. What's that? Who's that? Isn't that, just... go- is, is, isn't that Godet? The Godot Possibly thing? I don't Could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Critter, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 but... thought, I thought the Critter Critter was something else. <laughs> They also fixed the crash, which uh, I thought was funny because, you know, the game is, it's like a party game where uh, you have to basically screw everyone else over so you can win. And one of the things in one of the levels is laying down traps or having traps in the middle of the level already there. And whenever a player landed on a trap, the game would crash. And that doesn't happen anymore. Which that's, is nice. that's, because, that's because it fails to trap signal nine. Uh, I just thought like Akbar would kick through the wall and be like, oh yeah. I'm like, why do you sound like Randy it's Macho a tar. Man? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, Macho Man Randy Admiral Akbar would be the best thing ever. We need we need to get we need to get a fish man. Oh, yeah. to Coming that. to you Dragon Con next year. <laughs> Dude, this this is why you need to donate to our Patreon. That way no. you get all this. Yes. <laughs> no. we, that way, that way, if we can see the LGC version of the Shape of Water, starring Macho Man Randy Savage. 
<laughs> yes. All right. All right. Coming up next, uh, there's no quarter circles, but there is a lot of A, B, A, B, A, B, circle, whatever, fighting game. Fantasy Strike, throwing chairs at it. Well, Pedro, it looks like you're shit out of luck. It's time to throw some chairs at Fantasy Strike. It's from Sirloin Games, not Sirloin Games. Keep wanting to call it that. It's done on the Unity engine. Uh, you can pick it up for uh, 23 bucks, 20, 30 bucks. Um, and it is subject now to the Chairquisition, where the accused must have trial from Fedora, <laughs> Solus, and Fedorf. And then, then we can ask the question, was it fun? Uh, so, Ven, how did, how, did, how did Fantasy Strike run under... Actually, these guys sent us some keys, did they not? <laughs> like a billion years ago, man. They're like, hey, a billion we... years ago. We yeah, we got we got we got to we got to disclose the fact that we were provided copies for of this game <laughs> back when it was in early access. But now it's not in early access, so we can throw chairs at it. All right. So Ben, how to how to run on Fedorf? <laughs> Let's do it, man. Uh, F- Fedorf thirty. I gave it the business, uh, <laughs> which is I can legitimately say an old crusty nineteen twenty X that gets beat by everything these days. Uh, with uh, thirty two gigajoules of RAM, twenty sixty video encoder device, and no issues. I mean, none. I never did really. Uh, nothing to complain about performance wise. This game is a testament, a fucking testament that you can, in fact, deliver 60 FERPs at UHD at 3840 by 2160. Plenty smooth. And there's quite a bit going on in this too. No excuse. And this is not using that fancy Vulcan magic show title. This is just old fashioned OpenGL. So, you know, don't blame the tool. You know what I'm saying? Control-wise, uh, I broke out the handy-dandy Hug a Red. Play- I actually bought it just for this game because I haven't played a fighting game in so long. No problem there. Used it with a steamy controller. No problem. Excellent controller. No problem. And the menus work with uh, keyboard and gerbil if you really hate yourself. So, clean. Clean bill of health. I can roll it up, solid four, all the way across the board. Uh, yeah, on Fedora 30 with the i7-6700K with the Spectre mitigations on because I don't like being pwned by my browser. And the uh, GTX 1080 Ti that is all old and crusty and can't run Quake 2. It does launch um, at 1080p in a little window, uh, turning VSync off. You get about 512 frames a second, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty good. I didn't bother playing it at UHD because I had to stream this, so... 1080p window, it remained. Uh, graphics, it's very, it's a very good looking game. Um, it definitely wears its uh, Street Fighter 2 inspiration on its sleeve quite a bit, and you can see that in the character designs um, and sort of their move sets and how those are all designed as well. So, no, I mean it's it's no raw Plage Marizzo, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's an honest homage. Uh, control wise, yes, it controls. You can control it with your keyboard, or you can control it with your drill spock that you may have ordered from. Amazon when it's half off because otherwise you're paying $80 for a controller. Yeah, it, it works. Everything's fine. I will give it four chairs. Yeah. And over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080 with Solus, uh, it launches just fine. Uh, it holds 60 where it matters. I did see some dips in like loading screens, but you know, that's kind of to be expected. It's loading. Uh, graphics, barring a few issues where some characters close, like Valerie's skirt in particular, they clip onto themselves. No complaints. Uh, the controls, the first time I hit the, uh, the main menu, uh, the, to, uh, after the tutorial, uh, pressing the little cross, uh, button on the DualShock would only go up. It's like, what the hell? Alt F4, quit out of the game, started back up. It gave me the little prompt. Okay, set up your controller. It's like, oh, uh, now you're telling me to set, set up my controller despite me going through the tutorial without any issue. Okay, that was probably a hiccup. So, and I am in a good mood when it comes to this game. So, four shares. <laughs> uh, uh, is, is it over? Can I, can I awake from my slumber now? All right, there you go. It runs. Fantasy <laughs> Strike. They put effort into making sure that this game worked and did not click X. I mean, it really should Surprise. work when we think about it. I mean, you look at like the minimum requirements for this. We're talking like an i5 or look at this Athlon 2X3. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the game sort of intended to be locked at 60 FPS. So mm-hmm. I think it was sort of designed with the ground up to be very, very resource conservative. 
so it can run on those weaker systems. Indeed. Uh, indeed. All right. What about, what, what about fun then? Did you enjoy yourself? What I know did... you enjoyed kicking my ass. Go back into something that you brought up. Uh, you know, there's a bit of an homage and there's nothing wrong with that because they don't make these fighting games anymore. They kind of tapped out of this market. It's underserved. So let's just go ahead and get this out of the way, everyone. This is a better love story than Street Fighter V. Am I right? I mean, you know, if you're new here, I you might not know that that carrot was dangled over Linux users' heads a few years ago. Poof. This game started development, went through early access, and it's a baked product. Still haven't heard anything about that. Have we Capcom? Have we Valve? Where's that Vulcan? <laughs> anyway, the last fighting game I invested any actual amount of time into was, get off a fucking lawn, Mortal Kombat 2. And if you're going to go by the 10 on Fantasy Strike, that should be something that I can pick up and have a good time with. And you know what? I did. I did, Brad. You see, I, I tapped out way back when, when like the Ultra Mega Super Turbo Cock Smasher combo games were showing up. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Like, you know, straight up uh, Mortal Kombat. Well, yeah, Mortal Kombat 3 was really guilty of it and Killer Instinct 2. I was like, that's ah, too complex for me. Tekken a little bit too. Anyway, Fantasy Strike, uh, there's some wicked combos in there. But... None of them are instant match ending. And I think that, that's like a really big thing with me. And you also have like the YOLO counters, the Yogi counter, whatever they call them, but you, it's easy enough to play with. You basically, in Fantasy Strike, have to cock up two times. And I'm, I, I'm down with that. My old ass can deal with that. It's like, okay, two fuck ups. And speaking of moves, the controls, tight controls, they're tight. You screw up, it's your fault, you know it. Oh, you know what, you might blame the game, but you and the game both know what really went wrong. You cocked up. It doesn't make any apologies for that. The only downside, and this is kind of a big downside when you consider the $30 price tag on Brad, is it doesn't have much of an online community. And what is there are people who get up in the morning and they play this game and that's what they do until they eventually pass out that evening. <laughs> They're good. And there's about 26 of them. If you're waiting for online matchmaking, if you do get matched with somebody, chances are they're going to be able to smite you out of fucking existence without you doing anything. I mean, it's going to be that much of a gap in the skill levels. However, if you're going to be playing with friends, we played online uh, Thursday Thursday. Able to connect, rotate it out. It could be a little spotty when you're monitoring, but everything was workable. And so I'm going to have to say, you know, if it, if it had a larger community, which it deserves, if you like old school fighting games, we're talking MK1, maybe the original tech, and up to like uh, like Street Fighter, like Street Fighter Turbo before it went cray cray with like the super killer combos. This is going to be your jam. But just make sure you have somebody to play with it before you make the investment. So I'm going to say, check it out. Three chairs. Uh, good piece of kit. Solid job. Excellent work. Good spiritual successor to, like, old shit that I like. Yeah, this is... Uh, fa so Fantasy Strike is just a super well-constructed game. Um, and it was sort of designed from the ground up to accomplish this goal of stripping out all the dumb bullshit that's involved in fighting games like infinite strike combos, having to guess when your startup frames are, where your hitboxes, where your hurtboxes are, and get people to actually play the fun part of fighting games, which is the which is the prediction, which is the outperforming and outmaneuvering of your opponent. And this game takes away all all of that. If you if you look at uh, those like red flash red and blue flashing icons, those tell you uh if you're going to have uh if you're going to have a short wait or a long wait until your uh, your turn it is effectively your turn again um you can't button mash uh the blocking is set up in such a way where you can't really turtle up cuz you can only take about 3 hits before you have you have to switch on to the advantage or you have to take the initiative and it's just very mechanically well put together all all the various heroes have different strategies that you can use um, they all, they all have their various strengths and weaknesses and it's all very meticulously balanced too. So there's no like, Oh, if you play as, uh, uh, what, what's his name? GJ, then you'll just win at everything. <laughs> no, the, and if you, you can out strategy your way out of most of the problems here. Um, and, it, and to, to that degree, it's kind of funny because the health system is very, very conservative. Most attacks will only do one or two damage. And maybe there's going to be one that does like three, which is like the super fuck you combo. Um, 
And it's just, it's funny to watch all these like crazy dramatic animations. Just like, yeah, two hit points. But that that's kind of the point. It, it, um, it's, re- it's representational and it lets, it gives you sort of room to screw up and learn and strategize. And that's really what all this, ge- this game is all about. Spe- um, the, and the gameplay itself is actually really fun. It is, so- it is a solid fighter. You have to take your time. You have to be patient and not be like me and button mash like crazy. Cause that, that's just a habit I got to get out of from Tekken. Um, and yeah, the online stuff works well enough that, you know, I was playing with Foxy. He's in Australia connected via North, the North American continental shelf via a wet string. And that worked, uh, spectating does, like Ben mentioned, does get a little dumb though. You'll have to mess around in the menus and eventually you'll be able to watch people play. Um, but the fact of the matter is we need good, more good quality fighting games under Linux. And this is the latest edition. And even though it is 30 bucks, you're going to for it's, it's so well done. You will get your money's worth. I'll, I'll give it four chairs. Absolutely. And Linux needs fighting games. And I'm really, really glad that Fantasy Strike is here. Uh, as a bit of personal preference, I actually prefer Skullgirls' uh, combo, jug- uh, combo juggle button mashy style of combat. However, I do see exactly what kind of uh, fighting style Fantasy Strike was going for. And to be honest, I don't hate it. It almost punishes you for hitting buttons at random, like your typical button mashing, uh, instead of taking your time to learn each character's moves. I also like that you don't need like crazy button combos and half moons to execute the uh, special moves, or that the special moves themselves are not basically a one-hit KO. Heck, with most characters, some special moves deal one damage. That's it. That's all you're getting. And with most uh, most characters have an attack that deals two damage, and it's not even a special attack. So it's like, oh, neat. Uh, so that completely shifts the emphasis from trying to either land a killer combo or hitting your special to more of a tactical advantage, to, you know, take advantage of your uh, opponent's mistakes type of situation. So while I may prefer Skullgirl's fighting mechanics, I do recognize uh, Fantasy Strike as the superior game. Even if it's, you know, a 3D um, cel-shaded art style over the hand-drawn sprites that you get in Skullgirls, it looks absolutely amazing. If I had to find just a one nit to pick at... Uh, it's how long some of the animations take and how just the entire action in a fighting game freezes to let you look at that animation. Yeah, that, that gets a bit annoying, but I found my brain actually started to get used to the, the freezing. It's like, okay, I guess we're just sitting here for five or six seconds. I, 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 long I that like animation it, takes. It give, it gives you a breather, right? It gives it gives you a second to like, okay, I gotta I gotta take my hand off the controller and recenter myself, right? I think that yeah, that, and taking your hand off the controller is a very important thing because that's how you do the YOLO counters. Uh, y- if you're counter, about yeah. to be grabbed, uh, y- you let go of the controller and it's like, oh, counter of the uh, the grab, but yeah. I found my brain actually started to get accustomed to the um, like the freezy animation thing while it was playing out, just because I was enjoying myself very much. I very much enjoyed Fantasy Strike. That's that that's four chairs for me. All right, well there you go. It's a it's a pretty good fucking game. You should buy it. Maybe wait on wait till it goes on sale if you can't afford thirty bucks, but. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want more people to play it. Uh, it definitely deserves a larger community. And, you know, th- there's two things uh, Linux doesn't have. And outside of, like, Skullgirls, and we don't count Kings of Kung Fu because they've been abandoned. Out of shame, I one would assume. Um, this, Skullgirls, that's, that's it. I mean, more. Yeah. All right. Coming up next, the creator of Gam- of Gamorous, who may or may not be friends to children, responds to some of our comments from last week. Well, we have reached the end of the show. And chances are, if you've been watching us... Well, if you started watching us six years ago and you're still watching us now, I commend you. Nope. Seriously. Uh-uh. It takes... <laughs> Listen, man. It's uh, uh, drugs. <laughs> 
it takes a special kind of insanity uh, to stick with us for this long. But hey, and that, chances and that are, insanity's name's PCP. Or LSD. Or whatever other... Psilocybin, um, <laughs> DMT... It could be LSD. Performance-enhancing uh, things it could, you're on. It could, it could, you could be on XFCE. That's like the worst trip. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. That, th- th- those trips literally take thousands of years to complete. You're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, uh, chances are, if you've been watching us this long, you have something you need to say to us. Uh, us? No. Us. Hus. Yes. You hussy. I love you, Scott. I'm going to uh, let you get away with that. <laughs> and you can uh, go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and you can send some of your hate mail our way. Just make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little show uh, selection box and send us your message. Uh, I believe the form is pretty self explanatory. And if it isn't, well, you need to do some reading. Uh, Speaking of reading, if you're a game developer and you'd like to send us some keys or you'd like us to play your game, make sure that all three of us can play it because if we can, we're just going to make fun of you. Uh, Also, if you... If you want, if you want to hire us for consulting gigs, apparently, because people are making requests of us, yeah, shoot us an email. Pedro, we'll, we'll you need to rates. understand, man. I'm special. Rules don't apply to me. Uh, yeah, they do. Oh. I, I mean, I mean, you can you can only say that if you have in excess of about five hundred million dollars. Then the rules actually don't apply to you. True. <laughs> Fair point. Anyway, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Doug, so Doug, first Doug one... is talking about brooms. He says, I'm calling shenanigans on the performance double jeopardy. I had four chairs of fun with Superland despite its poo performance. But you dock at a chair and mix with the working and in the fun setting performance. That's almost as BS to say hypothetically docking a chair of fun because it made a folder in your home directory or something. Love, Doug. Um, So here's the thing. I don't think Superland <laughs> lost chairs in the fun section because of performance. Nope. I, th- it, it, I I gave it three. I think would I think we gave it three across the board. It's it was either two or three. I mean, it yeah. definitely gets docked a chair for. I mean, it's smooth, but you get a game like that that it's only hitting fifty, man. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, I don't even think that. I just on, only hitting fifty on a ten eighty T I man. Listen, perform- <laughs> game performance is hard. Just ask the fantasy strike, people. Oh, um, right. <laughs> that, that was just like burning up my 2060 at UHD. Four of those 1080s for those playing maths. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our, our, RTX on baby. But yeah, like I, I don't think I don't think we I I didn't personally ding at chairs for performance at least in the fun section. Mm, I just thought I, it was three I chairs did. worth of fun. Yeah. Well, then I you specifically mentioned that. But here, here's here's the here's the other but thing. Pedro's like a cat, the man. Sp- he's like wow, cat muscle. He's full of parasites. Yeah, that's, a, that's about right. Um, but like the, 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 the I, I don't want to be around any of the cats that you squeezed recently. <laughs> Listen, you got you got to start your morning every day with the fresh squeezed class class of cat juice. <laughs> That's a show cat title. Poop juice. <laughs> and, and, Meow and, any, and anyways, the the fun category is entirely subjective. It follows no rules outside of pure fiat. So take it take it that what you will. If you liked what you saw, if you thought what we said was compelling, go buy the game. You don't have to not buy games because we give it a bad score. Well, I don't know, man. Hang you can on. give I, it. You can uh, buy games in spite of it. There we go. Stop liking what I don't like. <laughs> Why is that still on my show? I'm helping you out, man. I'm trying to. I'm doing a visual bit so to help the people at home understand what <laughs> reason. Shut up. <laughs> Next one. I don't. I don't, I don't like that. Then. Uh, GameRoas. Uh, I'm the developer behind GameRoas, which we talked about last week. I saw your recent video that included discussion about game. There seems to have been a misunderstanding about what GameRoas is. It's technically all caps, not arch. For example. You can't use Pac-Man. Well, you can't. Okay, fine. To install packages, GamerOS is a snapshot of Arch. Oh, to... so it is Arch. No, no, yeah. shut up, you peasant. I'm, uh, because it's deployed as read-only system image, therefore not Arch for some reason. Updated automatically in, uh, uh, all right, words. <laughs> Similarly, uh, how Chrome OS works, which is not Linux, right? Because if we're it using. It is, it's Gen 2, but. Uh, but hey, dude, I can draw my own bullshit analogy. Shut your whore mouth. Um, <laughs> Gamer OS is as much Arch as Chrome OS is Gentoo. So yes, they're they're, they're the same. 
Wait, I, I didn't Yes, know. <laughs> it is Arch. Be, okay, no, gotcha. Both of you be quiet, because he's going to tell us that it runs in a v, a Java VM. Um, <laughs> the underlying OS matters um, little, except for the source package files. Yeah, access to the software and drivers. I'm also working on GameOS installer, which should be available soon. The current methods and booting Arch at the... Uh, and so media and running, I uh, hope you can see, is a lot more. Still arch. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay, okay, okay. Al Al Alcazar, Alcazar, I think, I think we have to wind this back. I don't think basing your operating system on arch is necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think it's it, I think it's challenging given the mercurial nature of its package versions, but it's not mm -hmm. in its, in and of itself a bad choice. Um, and the, the, the sort of notion that you have to sort of construct this artificial distinction between what is and what isn't Arch is ultimately irrelevant. It's still your project. You still control what's going inside, but it has Arch DNA in it uh, for, for, for better or for worse. It's like how Linux Mint has Ubuntu DNA in it because uh, actually probably in much in the same vein, you're still using those Arch packages much as in the same way that Linux Mint is using those Ubuntu packages and just redistributing it, even though you're tightly controlling the configuration of said packages to like appliance size it to TiVo as it as as it were, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You, if if you want if you want to base your thing on Arch, base it on Arch. Go nuts. Listen, if, man. If, if it works, it works. Dude, it's a, it's not Arch, bro. <laughs> and the thing you I brought you, you, up you're, you're, last you're right. week, Hannah Montana Linux. <laughs> the thing I brought up last week is like, yes, okay, can we have something that does this but not for Arch? Uh, I wasn't criticizing the fact that it was based on Arch or is claiming that it was Arch. The fact of the matter is, right now, the script that you have is for Arch. I was just asking, it's like, can we have that? But I don't know. Uh, I load up a Fedora live image and I run your script and it gets me to that uh, automatic and atomic uh, update system that you have going on there. I want that. Just Give me that, and I'll be happy. The moral of the story is, you got a neat project, and that's cool. Let's focus on that instead of, like... Yeah. Because to be <laughs> honest with you, I was speaking to somebody who's, like, been doing this. No one fucking cares. Yeah. We want shit that works. That's right. it. I was like, wait a minute, what does this gamer OS run on? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he, he, honestly, distro politics is just dick waving bullshit anyways. So don't take it too seriously. Correct a mundo. And you know what? On, on that dick waving bullshit, uh, we're, we're, we're probably going to cue the music. How about that? Sound like a Yeah. Point? Spin that dick. You yeah. spin. No, right we're not. Round, baby, right round. Oh, is this thing going to fucking play? <laughs> Did you arm track five? No, I didn't, motherfucker. Oh. Oh, take three. <laughs> with track five? Arm. Ha! <laughs> Bitches. That means Jordan's not muted this time around. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we want to thank you for riding this nightmare train all the way off to the end of the motherfucking tracks. That, that, that's, that's how we do at LGC. Uh, thanks again, everybody, making this possible. Uh, keep us loud, live, independent, commercial free, and all that fun shit. We do mean it. Anyway, you want to get a hold of me? At Vinstone on Twitter. Uh, at Reply Me There. Brah, at Reply Me There, sis. Uh, Mastodon. I think I'm just at Vin at mast.linuxgamecast. Dot com. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me wagging my dick around the internet on Twitter at the Burning Fool or at our Mastodon at mast.linuxgamecast.com at Projo. It's not very big though, so you're gonna have to look very, very hard to find it. <laughs> and I am Pedro Mateos. Basically, I stay away from Mastodon because whenever I opened it and I went to the Federated timeline, there's not a lot of porn dicks, going on. Just Mastodon. <laughs> Yeah, there's just Mast straight up porn going on Mastodix. in the Federated you know, fans, at, least so. you did, at least you don't squeeze cats. <laughs> I do not. But hey, if you want to shout out me, by all means do so. Uh, I'm in Cambridge in England, so if you see me walking down the street, by all means shout at me. But hey, Stab I'm him. accounted for on Twitter. That's the way to do it. I wanted <laughs> to say a bunch of things, but they were, well, it, I don't want to end up like as an accessory to murder. So I'm not. Yeah. Be nice it, to it, Pedro it, if you see him. It's stochastic terrorism is On what it scooter. is. We're going to roll some credits and thank the people. Maybe. I don't know. Does the credit <laughs> button work? Yeah. You got to click it to play, man. Oh, my God. We got so many people to thank in space a long, long time ago. In the galaxy space far, far spades. Away. In space. Maybe. There it goes. Space. Uh, yeah. So, so, 
All right, it's episode <laughs> Cluck C. We got to thank our executive producers, Arthurian and Fox Dog, Empty, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Bob Brampt, Drummer, Aldius, Haplo, Magic, Scott, and all oh, of those producers Scott. who Ven and Pedro are going to talk over each other to read out. Nope. <laughs> Dementor, Renee, Martin, Jill, and Steve, ah. Kim, Daniel, Techmet, Simja, the Sildat, Igor, Mir, Scott, oh, Matt, Matt Fakshet, Ryan, oh, Linux, oh, Noob, Jordan, oh, 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 Evandro, oh, 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 the other Langston. Jordan, <laughs> Chris, Frigo. Shay, M. Langston, Massivoni, Nubbin, Look W, Christopher C, Great I will beat you in a rap battle once. Frank. Basil, O'Dung, Vertnog, J girl. <laughs> Actually, we, we got a brand new fucko introduction now. We got the. Uh, we do, Mr. Mr. Chris yeah. B. <laughs> do, do we do we still have room on the fuck wall, or are we gonna have to finally roll out? There's like one three. spot left. Look. Oh my god! <laughs> it's the end of an era. It's the end of an era. Away. Dun dun da da dun. Yeah. All right. Now that Frank's gone, let's talk shit about him. Man, Frank. Frank's a punk. Man, I, I genuinely think he's anorexic. Dude, that, that, that's no Frank. That's fucking like... He needs to put a bit more meat on his bones, that's for sure. He needs more e fried Ewoks. LGC cares, bitches. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Die <to> fire. Bye! <laughs> Hello, Sebastian. We just finished our show. Thanks for showing up. Five dudes.